Hey, what's up guys? This is the Asus Zen Wi-Fi AX Mini. In this video, I'm going to unbox this thing. I'm going to do some speed tests and different configurations. I'm going to do some range tests. And at the end, I'll let you guys know if I think it's worth getting and why or why not. Now, looking at this specs-wise, it's actually very comparable to the Eero 6 because it has the latest in wireless standards, which is Wi-Fi 6, otherwise known as Wireless AX, and it is backwards compatible with the previous wireless standards. It has the same speed rating, which is AX1800, and it is a dual-band system. Now, later on in the video, I'll explain the differences between dual-band and tri-band. Now, what is a mesh Wi-Fi and how is it different from a regular router? Well, this is actually a really good picture to show you guys. Now, normally if you have a router like this one, it basically hooks up to your modem and it gives your devices internet access or network access. And as long as you're hooked up with ethernet, you're good to go. But Wi-Fi, the farther away you get from this thing, the weaker your signal will become, the slower your speeds will become. So if, you know, ignoring these two, like if you're at over here, you are basically, you know, you might not even get Wi-Fi coverage because you might be too far away, or if you do get Wi-Fi coverage, you'll be really slow. Now what a mesh Wi-Fi does is it basically connects two or more devices, in this case we have three, but essentially connects two or more devices and they act as one network. So, you know, if you have your Wi-Fi device, let's say you, you take your phone and you're walking around your place, it, you connect your network, your SSID, which is your Wi-Fi name, and when you're walking throughout your place, if you get closer to this guy, well, it automatically switches to this guy. When you get closer to this guy, it switches to, the, to this guy. So essentially, you're getting full bars or close to full bars, basically you're getting really good Wi-Fi coverage no matter where you are. Now there are different ways of connecting these to each other, either wirelessly or through a wire. Obviously connecting them via Ethernet is always better to each other, but you can just wirelessly connect these to each other. Okay, so this thing is, you know, it has a whole bunch of security features. You know, knowing ASUS, I've actually reviewed the XT8. This is basically the lower end, not that this thing is bad, but it's just the slightly lower end version of that. But it has a whole bunch of features and a whole bunch of stuff that's included. So, and Asus gives you a ton of options. I don't know if any other router gives as many options as Asus does. I it They give you so many options, it's... It, I feel like it's unnecessary for most people, but the fact that it's there, it's, it is nice that they do give you a whole bunch of options, but it can be a little excessive. Um, not that it's difficult to use, but just as a heads up. But it does come with like really good security features and everything that you would expect from a modern system. Now, this thing mentions that it covers up to 4,800 square feet. Now. Take that with a grain of salt because that really depends on your home. You know, if you have other wireless interference around, if you're in a building and other people have routers and stuff, or if there are a lot of walls, if you have concrete walls, if you have brick walls, you know, all of that stuff really basically hurt this number. And that's why it says it covers up to. But I will do a range test and I've done a whole bunch of other mesh Wi-Fi's and it's going to be consistent with the placement of that. So, yeah, let's open this up. 12 seconds later. Okay, so you get three of these, obviously. You get a LAN port, obviously. So, okay. So you get a WAN LAN, okay. So you get two ports on this one. And you get one more on this one. Okay, so just by guessing, so this is gonna be your main one. This is this is a router. These are probably just extenders. They're probably not routers. So I would have to use this main one to hook up to my network. And then I'm assuming that I can hook this up 
to this via Ethernet to give it a better connection. And I, I will obviously try that and let you guys know, but uh, that is my assumption. So that would be for Ethernet backhaul. But then I wonder how, I guess I would probably have to go through a switch if I wanted to connect two of these. Because if I go from this to this, then I can't go any more, any more from this to the other one without using a switch. So should be interesting. But I will take a look at that and I will answer that when I try it out. But I'm pretty sure you could hook it up wirelessly for sure. Stop. Browse tutorial. Sure, having trouble. VIP member notice and stuff. Sure. ASUS instructions, same thing. So this is the little quick setup guide that we have. So obviously it should be very similar to the X-T8 in terms of setup. And this is probably all the power cables and everything. So ethernet cable, CAT5E. Power cable, probably the same power cable for all three. Yeah. Okay. And let's figure out if there's a voltage. 100 to 240 volts, so this should pretty much work anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up and we will go from there. Much, much, much later. It's been two weeks since I've actually unboxed this thing, I've been running it. I wanted to see if there were going to be any drop connections or anything of that nature and so far so good which is always a good sign. Now before I get into the speed test and range test and give you guys my overall opinions I quickly want to just answer my unanswered question really during the unboxing which was well how do you connect these and it's similar to what I was saying so basically you take your router and obviously you have two nodes so this one's a node and the other one's a node which is identical to this guy obviously. So you take your router, hook it up to your modem, you take the LAN, you go to an unmanaged switch, and then from that unmanaged switch, let's say you get an 8 port or whatever, a 16 port switch, then you would take two ethernets, and one of them would go to this LAN, and then the other one would go to that LAN port. Um, so those two nodes would basically connect, and what's the advantage of a wired backhaul? Well, that gives you the best possible speeds, and I'll go over that when I get into the speed test and stuff. I'll actually tell you guys the results that I got. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to hook these up to you know to each other wirelessly so obviously this one's hooked up to your modem via ethernet but then this one's just plugged in like one or two rooms away to the power and you want to use this LAN port can you use it yes you can so you can hook it up to your computer to your xbox whatever you want to use it for so you basically you can either use it as wired backhaul or if it's wireless backhaul, you can actually just use it as an ethernet port. So you're free to use it either way. Now this being a dual band system, I quickly wanted to touch on tri-band versus dual band. So the short answer is tri-band usually gives you better wireless backhaul speeds for the secondary node. For the one that's hooked up to your modem, you're not gonna notice any difference, but for the secondary one, usually you're going to get better wireless speeds. And the reason for that is that tri-band has three bands and dual band has two so tri-band has an additional band and that additional band is used for these to communicate to each other and it's not shared with anything else so when your wi-fi devices like your phone or tablet or laptop or whatever connect to your mesh wi-fi or your router they don't share that band and therefore you get a dedicated connection the other advantage, which is an or, not an and, but the other advantage is if these are hooked up via wired backhaul, well, then that additional band in the tri-band is used to actually support more devices. And the reason for that is because on Wi-Fi, not on, not, not on Ethernet, but on Wi-Fi, devices actually share like so if you have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi devices that are connected on Wi-Fi they're actually sharing network speeds they're also sharing internet speeds in fact everything is sharing internet speeds whether you're on Ethernet or you're on Wi-Fi so if someone's watching a movie someone else is playing a game 
you know, if you're streaming a website, someone else, that's all sharing your internet speeds. But when I'm saying on Wi-Fi, that's your network speeds. So a network is within the local network. They're sharing speeds. So if they were trying to talk to each other or, you know, you know, transfer files or play a movie on some local network attached storage, then those speeds would be affected. Something that has nothing to do with the internet as well. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have questions, you know, leave it in the comment sections below. But this is a dual band, so the problem with wireless backhaul is you don't have that additional frequency. And because you don't have that additional frequency, the frequency that they're talking on is also being shared with your Wi-Fi devices and therefore the secondary nodes can't go as fast because they're being shared. So that's really the answer and that actually became a longer answer but I think it's a more complete answer but again if you guys have any questions please leave in the comment sections below. Jumping into speed test, my internet speeds are around 480 megabits per second download and 24 megabits per second upload. Now all the numbers I tell you guys are going to be in megabits per second. For my Wi-Fi 6 device, I use my iPhone 12 Pro, and for my Wi-Fi 5 device, I use my Pixel 5. So I have numbers for both of these. These devices were used both for my speed test and for my range test. Now jumping straight in, I'm going to use the same numbering scheme that I use for all my other mesh Wi-Fi's to be consistent. So starting off, we're going to go with option 1. And option one is when you use a router by itself. So technically it's not a mesh Wi-Fi at this point if you're using this by itself, but you could technically buy this and not use the other two and it will work. So as long as you're using the router and if you need more ethernet ports, you know, just hook up the LAN to a switch and then you're good to go. And I recommend an unmanaged switch. In fact, I'll have a lot of product links in the description below. So be sure to check those out. Okay, so option one is when you connect this to your modem by itself and then I get close to it with both devices and I pretty much get full speeds, which is what I would expect. If I didn't get full speeds, I would be concerned. Option two is when you get a router and a non-router. So ASUS calls it a node, so in this case we'll call it a node, but essentially an access point, extender, or satellite, whatever you want to call it, a non-router. So it's when you get a router, obviously this is hooked up, and then this is the wireless backhaul option. So this one, the node, is hooked up, you know, one or two rooms away and hooked up to power and these are wirelessly talking to each other. And when I do speed tests, now for the speed test, if you're close to the main router, you're always going to get full speeds. But when you're closer to the secondary one, which is where I do all my speed tests on the secondary one, pretty much gets cut by a little more than half for both devices, which is not surprising because that's usually how dual band routers work, uh, dual band mesh Wi-Fi's work, I should say. So I wasn't surprised, but pretty much got cut by a little more than half. And if you're wondering, again, I did hook this up to my Xbox Series X because these were wirelessly connected so I could actually use this LAN port and I did speed test on that and pretty much got the same numbers. Now I'm going to skip options 3 and 4 and the reason for that is because options 3 and 4 I usually say when I have two routers but in this case because I have a router and a node I'm going to jump to option 5 which is a wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul option which is when you hook, you know, you could basically hook up this LAN port directly to this, but then if you did that, you couldn't connect to that via wired. So obviously if you want to do that, you would hook up this LAN to a switch and then go to this and then from the switch, you would also go to the other one and then you would have a wired backhaul setup. But basically when these are wired to each other, you get full speeds. So you are good to go there, which is what I would expect because wired backhaul uh, is usually amazing. So now getting into range test for range test again i use the same devices and just a really quick recap obviously range really varies based on where you are in terms of you know are there a lot of other routers pretty much are you in a building where other people are using other routers are there a lot of walls do you have thick walls do you have concrete do you have brick are you, you know, up and down you know, stairs and stuff? So all of that affects your range. At 20 feet, 6.1 meters away, 
I got full speeds, which is what I was expecting, at 50 feet or 15.2 meters away. That's when I actually go outside and I close my front door, which actually makes a difference. If I leave it open, I can actually go a little bit longer. But because I closed it for all my other mesh Wi-Fi's, I closed it for this one as well. And I actually got really good speeds at 50 feet away, actually very good speeds. I mean, obviously it's dropping. You can see the Wi-Fi 6 device is doing better than the Wi-Fi 5, and that's really the advantage here. So the farther away you get, that's when Wi-Fi 6 starts to shine. Whereas when you're close, you're not gonna really notice too much of a difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5 devices. Now at 60 feet away, Again, I'm still getting really good speeds. Obviously, the Wi-Fi 6 is really doing a lot better than the Wi-Fi 5 device. And then at 70 feet, I still got really good numbers. And that was pretty much the extent of where Wi-Fi 5 stopped working. At 90 feet, I mean, it was starting to cut in and out at that point. But I've got seven down and one up, which are essentially unusable speeds. But the fact that it actually went that far is pretty amazing for my particular location. So those are actually really good numbers. And AI protection is free, which it should be for all mesh Wi-Fi's, but it's really not. So is it worth getting? Why or why not? Well, I think for the price, it's actually really good. I think you get a ton of options. I think you get pretty good range. Obviously, if you're going to do a wireless backhaul, I usually recommend a tri-band mesh system. So, I'm not really a fan of dual band mesh systems when you're going to do a wireless backhaul, but in my case, I have a wired backhaul. So for someone like me, this would totally be fine because I would get pretty good range for a good price. And yeah, I mean, you get a three pack for retailing for $279. So I think that's a pretty good deal for this system. And it actually delivers in terms of performance. So it, I, I think it's actually a pretty good buy. So I, I think it's good. The, really the only bad things are about this is this only has one LAN port. So if you were doing a wired backhaul setup, then you couldn't use ethernet for anything else. Uh, whereas some other systems you like, if you were to get the Eero 6, for example, you know, because it has two ports, you could pretty much use, assuming you get two Eero 6 routers, not the Eero 6 extender because the Eero 6 extender has no ports. But if you got two Euro 6 routers, as an example, or two Nest Wi-Fi routers, or the Deco X60, which I personally think that's probably one of the better ones, but you get two Ethernet ports, so even if you did wired backhaul, you're free to use the second one to connect to an unmanaged switch, to expand your ports even more and stuff. So that's really the drawback that you only get one port. But if that doesn't really matter too much, or if you're going to do wireless anyways and you're okay, with the speed slowing down, then I think it's pretty good. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Hit that subscribe button. If you guys have questions or comments, leave it in the comment sections below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.